If we vaporize the royal jelly, though, we could placate the bug, so... Alright, so we gotta get some royal jelly. <laughs> Let's go find the hive, I guess. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. We are back in stasis. Now, last time we... Cut out this PDT from John's spine, and then made it down to hydroponics, so this is where we are. Let's quickly take a look around the room here. The elevator, vines covering the elevator, is there, oh, there it is. The elevator shaft, now covered in a thick band of foliage, looms over the room like a giant forest mushroom. Fans, although the fans were installed to keep the air cycling, they are now helping reduce the buildup of vegetation. Not that much, man. Door, this doorway's bright light. Uh, indicates the entrance to another laboratory. Corpse. Edwin Chong, civil, civilian. Personal data tag 934433 GNS. Security level zero. Overgrowth. The creeping growth on this level has upholstered the drab surfaces in an almost comforting fabric of green. Another doorway. Another doorway. Alright, so there's three labs. Fine. Um, elevator. The vines may attempt to redecorate the elevator before too long. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's start here, and then we'll just work our way around the room. Okie dokie, then. This is ridiculous. How did it grow this world in a few months? I don't know, John. Uh, broken vaporizer. The vaporizer lot. These plants can naturally develop this fast. Kane developed the technology to accelerate plant growth. Oxygen is big business. <laughs> Alright, fine. Sounds notwithstanding. As I was saying, broken vaporizer. The vaporizer lies broken beyond repair, wrapped in vines. Wrestled from their upright position, the vaporization chambers are now resting idly on the floor. Overgrowth, a network of green vines snake across every surface. Corpse, James Herbert, deckhand, personal data tag 98867, security level 0. Keita Yamada, civilian liaison, personal data tag 99149, security a level 1. Liquid stains on the wall. A green scum has dripped down from the ceiling, staining the wall. Yeah, locked door, okay. Overgrowth. The vines have covered many of the laboratory surfaces. In some areas, the wall and floor can't be seen behind the tangled weave. Metal plaque. A polished metal plaque is engraved with the slogan, Gardening, just another day at the plant. Oy. Okay, puns. Uh, static filled monitor. Another monitor displaying the vessel's favorite show, static. Computer terminal. Desk. Uh, another computer terminal. Vaporizer pad. This is an evaluation platform for specimens and samples to be inserted into the glass chambers. In cracked glass, this vaporizer has been punctured by a hole, leaving a spider web of cracks in the glass. Okay, let's uh, let's start here. Vaporizer report. The Vaporizer, the perfected Mark V model of the Kane Corporation Trans-State Modifier. Hmm. Using advanced and unique molecularization technology, the Vaporizer has the ability to shift the targeted substance between gas, liquid, and solid states without any of the structural breakdowns seen in objects shifted between states on a regular basis. The Mark V is the latest model, but it hasn't yet been rolled into mass production because of the current difficulty fueling the Vaporizer with resources on board the Groom Lake. Recent experiments undertaken were more than satisfactory and it passed the Kane safety and security test with no adverse effects, causing harm to the user observed. It has been graded level 4 because of the specific nature of its technology and the limited quantity of existing vaporizers. During an experiment recently carried out on the Royal Jelly? Produced by hydroponics, Dr. Gray and other observers commented on the remarkable speed at which the jelly was transformed into gas, thus placating their insect population. Okay. We got bees here or something? Uh, let's not activate anything yet, and I'm assuming that it's cracked, so I can't imagine that it'll, that it'll really activate. Uh, okay. That's locked. Let's... Let's look at this. Dr. Sebastian Gray. Okay. Ooh. Text is gonna be a little hard to read with the... Okay. January 2nd. Finally! We have more room for the Linesi Harvii strains, which I've been working on so hard. It's days like this that humanity truly proves why it's crawled out of the ocean before any other. 
My section has been expanded, I have more staff, true, but they are drones and have little other function. Now we can expand the research potential of Project Kitchen Knife and see what else the plants can yield. Kitchen Knife is a hydroponics? Uh... Okay, whatever. The oxygen production rate is quite unlike anything my initial projections could have predicted. Last year, it became the worst kept secret on the Groom Lake, and all of a sudden, I had more interns than I could comfortably employ. Their only function is to stumble about the place and ask troublesome questions that I have little time to answer. If only our world was more like that of insects. I have plenty of workers and drones, but none of the unwavering loyalty. Bees work and work, the faith in their queen unquestioning and constant. What kind of loyalty is beyond price, or that kind of loyalty is beyond price? These interns of mine have their uses, I suppose. We always need volunteers willing to get close to the queen. Alright, so they do have like a... Well, he talks about bees, but then the queen is... Okay, fine. February 16th. Am I surrounded by incompetence? One of those imbecilic interns got too close to the queen, and she showed her her... affections. Quite amusing, though not to him. This means that I must attend another accident debriefing with the board, though. Dr. Malin does love to test me. I see him up on the hearing bench, and he grins at me in that supercilious look that he has perfected over the years. I suppose that I have him to thank for the current position. It was his recommendation to the board that made them hire me in the first place. Still, I believe he has come to enjoy these little power plays. He does so like to keep me under his heel. That, my dear doctor, is only a temporary situation. Once this project is complete, the chess games that we play so often will no longer be our only battleground. Regarding the project, some of the bug eggs failed to hatch properly. I suspect this is why the queen was more aggressive than usual. There are more than enough drones to continue the collection work. Their unique chemical properties are doing wonders for the plants. Although I'm running short of interns prepared to work in close proximity to them since the last incident. The worker I appreciate the most is Akiza. I was astonished to discover that she is related to the legendary Dr. Tenshu of the Eugenics Wars. I did consider mentioning it to her, but I sense she's oddly ashamed to have him as her ancestor. If it wasn't for the men like him, our profession would be a hollow shell of what it is now. Then again, if it wasn't for him, genetic research wouldn't have been put back by several generations, now would it? <sighs> the ethical quandaries we face as men of science. June 16th. The insects are restless. They rumble in their apiaries and are more aggressive than usual. My personal deduction is that the presence of the marine thugs aboard the ship are the cause. Armed guards all over the place. I was stopped by one the other day and asked my reasons for going into hydroponics. Well, after explaining I was head of the damn project, I had the guard removed from his post and then the ship. This is insanity. How am I expected to progress with these thugs around? September the 23rd, I recall complaining about the inundation of interns. <sighs> if only they were still here now. Both Ivan and Theodore disappeared from the rooms last night, and I've had to speak to security about their whereabouts. They were Akiza's assistants, and now the production of the Queen's Royal Jelly has slowed exponentially. That's been a huge blow, but a rather extraordinary anomaly has appeared in our growth pods, a hitherto undiscovered strain of fungus. Its origin is something of a mystery to me. These fungal growths fascinate. At first, I thought it was a common garden variety mold, but after a substantial analysis performed by Akiza, it seems to harbor neuron activity. That is to say, it seems to exhibit rudimentary signs of intelligence. We've certainly created some unusual species on this deck, but the idea of a quasi-intelligent fungus growing and evolving of its own volition is exciting and, frankly, frightening. I've asked Akiza and the remnants of her team to cultivate it, but exhibit caution in where it is spread. Ha. Huh. October the 24th. I was asked by one of Dr. Malin's assistants if the fungal substance discovered growing in the bowels of the ship had anything to do with us. I lied, of course, but this is becoming alarming. Our experiments flourished at first. We may have lost more staff recently, but our experiments have been very fruitful indeed. Confidentially, the properties of the fungus is both extraordinary and terrifying. It has the remarkable ability to take control of a living subject's central nervous system and hypothalamus, as observed in the monkey we used for testing. The monkey shrieked and thrashed in rage for the first few days after it was exposed, and then it became quiet, observant, and uncannily intelligent. It's certainly aggressive, but then again, which viruses aren't? December 1st. No, no, no. 
We've officially lost control of the deck. Eden now truly belongs to the beasts. We've seen strange things. I watched as the fungus took control of the deck. As it spread through the staff, and much to my shame, I watched their deaths and examined their bodies. Nobody can cross the pods because the bugs are so aggressive that when Solomon went through in a rad suit, they ripped it from his body and stung him to death. It took mere moments. Still, I live in the hope that the insects will remember me, their creator, and perhaps see me as one of their own. Damn. And of course, that's the last entry, so I'm going to go ahead and say they didn't see him as one of their own. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Tenshu. Here we go. Dr. Tenshu to Dr. Green, my family. Oh, okay, this is the eugenics thing. Dr. Gray, <laughs> I bet he brought it up. I do not wish, yeah, there it is. Do not seem unprofessional or impolite, but I would ask that you not press me on the subject of my ancestry any further. I was nearly refused entry to medical school on the basis of my family's background, and the torment I suffered at the hands of my school peers regarding my great-great-uncle was unbearable. I am fully aware of his actions, and I've seen countless photographs and documents of the consequences of his work. I took this position to change our world for the better, not to be reminded of the skeletons in my family's closet. I've enjoyed our working relationship thus far, Dr. Gray, but I prefer my family history no longer be a topic of our conversations. Thank you for understanding, Akiza. Yeah, you know there's something called the eugenics war, you can only imagine what the consequences of research would be. Dr. Way to Dr. Gray, meal. Dr. Gray, I enjoyed our meal yesterday. I was, it was refreshing to hear a man so outspoken on this ship. I appreciate your candor, and I do agree that perhaps it's time the board was shaken up a little. Although this is merely an observation rather than an action plan, I think the top leadership needs some new blood. I'd second you if you decided to take on the challenge yourself. Your impeccable scientific pedigree more than qualifies you. By the way, did you know where they were keeping that new cargo? It seems rather like a waste of resources if they won't even tell us where it is. Regards, Dr. E.F. Way. I wonder what this new cargo is. Okay. Alright, so there's some sort of... Some sort of hive. Okay. What's this? Yes, we got a plaque. A plaque with a bad pun. Uh, and that's a locked door. Okay, so... There's a room with bugs. Um, the vaporizer said that if we... If we vaporize the royal jelly, though... We could placate the bugs, so... Alright, so we gotta get some royal jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go find the hive, I guess. Are you fucking kidding me? What? It's, it's some sort of insect. Keep your distance. It's tied up. Doesn't look like it can get loose. Tied up? How big is it? Big. Okay, that's not really... Alright, settle down. That's not really what I was expecting, but, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, let's not read the flavor text on the bug first. I'm assuming that's the queen. But alright. The overgrown vines are no less dense in this room. Hardened amber. Amber trickles from the tree? Tree, okay. From the tree, but most of it has hardened into an incredibly tough compound. Tree, a tall, strangely shaped tree, grows out of a housing space in the floor. Milk from the creature is being fed into the tree by a pair of tubes. Milk cables. The tree has been pierced in various spots by these two tubes. As you watch, the milk travels sluggishly through them and into the tree. Computer terminal. The vines seem to be trying to pluck this terminal out of the wall socket. So far, they have not succeeded. Milk processor. This receptacle stores in the processed milk. Milk collection tank. These tanks exist to collect what is being milked from the brute. And milk suction cups, there we go. Semi-organic suction cups were custom designed to harvest this creature's excretions. Dang. Okay. Large, swollen milk sac. A mottled abdomen, swollen egg sac, or plump milk gland. Possibly all three. Queen insect. It's difficult to grasp... Come here. Come here. Difficult to grasp the size and form of this insect creature. Utter like protuberances sprout from its bulbous abdomen while the pincers stab the air. Restraint harness. This series of struts hold the grotesque creature in place. Okay. Is there anything else? Oh, that's more that's more of a harness. Oh, I see. This is the harness. Dang. 
Eh, it's happy when it does that. That's nice. Nice to know it's happy when it does whatever it's doing. All right, hydroponics. Queen chamber. All right, let's read this first. Activate the... No, no, we're not activating anything. Okay, so reports. The Queen's life cycle, week 93. Monday, healthy, docile, responsive to stimuli, milking as normal. Tuesday, no activity. Wednesday, healthy, heightened aggression, recommended milking with only experienced staff. Thursday, no activity. Friday, healthy, highly aggressive, three personnel wounded in milking. Saturday, healthy, quiet, unusual brooding behavior, milking normal. Sunday, healthy, aggressive, one fatality via venom pouches. Okie dokie then. Back. All right, Akiza Tenshu. All right, you gotta calm down, man. I'm reading emails. February 20th. Oh, praise God Almighty, I couldn't be happier. Dr. Great took me to one side and told me that I was the only person who had the skill and ability to take control of the nursery. He promoted me on the spot and said I was now personally responsible for the queen. The royal jelly that she produces has proved to be incredibly useful. I discovered through my own analysis that not only is the jelly an essential nutrient for the insect population, but that it has other amazing physical properties too. It accelerates molecular bonding in certain substances, acts as a thickener for many natural substances while also regenerating their natural properties. With some engineering, I imagine we could turn this into a true medical breakthrough. I imagine doctors in hospital wards on Earth using our bonding agent to heal wounds instantly. Perhaps finally the Tenshu name will be revered in medical history, instead of reviled. March 10th. The Queen is a temperamental little thing. A fiery... little thing? Jeez. A fiery lady to be sure. Ah, uh, but Queenie, you forget. I grew up in a family with more than one fire-breathing dragon. If I can handle my mother, I can certainly handle you. Although, when she is milked, she's rather docile. I dare say she's rather attached to me. I'm sure I heard her purring at me. That's the only way I can describe it. I'm aware that she's a bug and all, but it sounds rather like approval. My parents kept hives of bees. I get with the bees. So I've never been squeamish over insects, and I can tell the difference between aggression and favor. I'm still the only person who can get close without being bitten, and her bite can leave one hell of a mark. Let me tell uh, one hell of a mark. Let me tell you, Hodgkins said he'll report his side effects upon his return from sick leave. Okay. In other news, Dr. Myrick, one of Dr. Gray's subordinates, has requested samples of the jelly for experiments with his tree resins. He thinks it might have a use as an industrial adhesive. This is a little way away from original intention, but I do suppose it's a start. August 12th. I try so hard to be positive, to be the person whose enthusiasm never once flags nor fails, but when you start hearing rumors that appall you to your very core? I tried to shrug it off, but recently it's become harder to deny it. I've been hearing sounds from the elevator shafts, the sounds of a wailing infant, crying out in pain before suddenly being silenced. That is no rumor. Sometimes I lay awake at night and I swear I can hear the crying of children. I can't be dreaming. I saw Ingracia to confess my fears. He gave me a prescription to help me sleep, but something in his eyes said that he knew I was hearing something real. And worse, it was something he was hearing too. More rumors. Dr. Malin is using children in his research. I have to ignore it. If it were true, Kane would remove him immediately. Surely. Even Dr. Gray appears to find it uncomfortable. Uh, an uncomfortable subject for discussion, and this is a man who slept easily when Isaac got his left cheek torn off by the Queen. September the 22nd. Is Dr. Gray short of staff again? Once again, I'm being forced to manage multiple projects, and only this time, it's an experimentation of an acutely destructive new spore that seems to have infected a few of the pods. First observations, it's a parasitic fungus that grows faster than a common weed, and like a common weed, I feel it should be destroyed. But I know that Dr. Gray won't do it. He, like many of the other senior doctors, sees any new species as something to be exploited or weaponized. October the 31st. In the darkness, something stirs. I can't say what. I'm too afraid to find out what it is. When Ivan and Theo disappeared a month back, we assumed they'd somehow deserted. That was the only official stance taken by Dr. Malin and the board, anyway. Last night's events prove that there is something on board with us, though... God knows where it's from. The Queen was more rambunctious than I've seen her before, and milking her was certainly more challenging than I'm used to. Edmund was assisting. We've been short on staff, and some of our volunteers are simply refusing to show for work. The Queen's environment has been disturbed a great deal, and so her violent tendencies are more pronounced. Edmund was on his way 
out of hydroponics when it happened. A thing, some thing, pulled him into one of the air ducts. I didn't see much. I saw him walking towards the decontamination chamber, and the next moment his legs were kicking the air as whatever it was dragged him up into the ceiling and dragged him up and into the ceiling while he squealed like a pig. I'm resigning tomorrow. I did not sign up for mad science. I came to Kane to serve humanity and clear my family's name, not watch my crewmates be slaughtered by a species that Dr. Malin refuses refuses to confirm or deny. I thought it was gonna refuse to kids like destroy. December 3rd, if only I'd resign <laughs> well there we go. If only I'd resign when I said I would. And if only they hadn't ignored my demands to have the infernal fungus destroyed. It's growing over me now. Over my skin. It's burrowing into my flesh. The insects attacked again today, and it seems to only worsen. Dr. Gray was destroyed by a swarm of them, and now he is only fertilizer for that ever-ravenous mold he was so curious about. The uninfected are making an attempt to escape. This doesn't include me. The emergency flares keep the bugs away. I told them to give me the flare to hold back the bugs so they could get away. I hope they escape soon. This fungus is making my head feel funny, and I'm sure I can feel it growing through my ear canal. Dang. Okay. Emails. Shush! Dr. Great Attention. Foolish pranks. Azika. Azika? Akiza. Dr. Gray, she's your favorite subordinate, man. Azika, with the greatest respect, could you please stop the ridiculous pranks your group insists on carrying out in the fertilization chambers? I will admit that they're hardly dangerous, but they are undignified. I certainly wouldn't like to be present when a cane inspector stumbles upon young Theodore racing in front of the queen, hands over his head while shouting, I'm covered in bees. It is unprofessional. Please instruct them to cease their foolishness at once. Kind regards, Dr. Gray. Okay. <laughs> uh, E.F. Way to Dr. Tenshu. A matter of spirit. Akiza, don't worry. I don't think that you're losing your mind. Ghosts are a possibility, but I suspect that your hearing is perhaps the sounds of devices playing in other parts of the ship. Shush. I do believe, at the moment, that the corporeal world and spirit world are very much divided. At the moment. Nice. <laughs> So, try to calm yourself. If you would like, I can talk to someone in cargo storage about these sounds, but I wouldn't worry about it. This island is full of noises, but pay them no mind. For once, I'm quoting Shakespeare, not the Bible. <laughs> Get some sleep and maybe do fewer night shifts. Eleanor. So, is cargo storage... I don't think... No, we weren't cargo storage, we were product storage. Although, maybe cargo and product are synonymous in this case. All right, we can interact with the Queen, which seems like bad news bears all around. Um, well, we can turn on the pumps and get her milk, which I guess is the royal jelly, which we can then vaporize to get it at the bugs. Or placate the bugs, fine. But let's see what's down here first. Hmm. Isn't that like... That's not sound like a happy noise. Nope, does not sound like a happy noise at all. Let's see what we got. Tree. This tree is a perfect example of a species that has been gene-tailored for generations to go perfectly in hydroponic environments on vessels, lunar stations, and asteroid mining settlements. Moss-covered metal wall. Moss has spread across the surface of this wall, feeding on elements of the ore. What else we got? Thick vine. A growth agent has spurred this section of vine to flourish. It's now half as thick around as the hatch you entered through. Overgrown hanging vine. Uh, there we go. The hanging vine stretches across the room, its tendrils hanging down like a centipede's legs. You can't tell whether it's wrapped around an existing structure or whether it's traveled the distance on its own accord. I'm gonna go around, then I'm gonna go check out what's at the bottom here. Hold on. Collapsed bridge. The flora here grew steadily, wrapping its limbs around the catwalk. Slowly but inexorably, the flora pulled at the metallic structure until it collapsed. Overgrown vine. Oxygen collection tank, a tank to collect the oxygen produced by the bountiful fauna in hydroponics. I do not doubt that there is bountiful fauna. Slow spinning fan? Slow spinning fan. The fan spins sluggishly as the vines, through the gap in the blades, have begun to wrap around it. Observation platform. The observation point towers above the growth pods, providing an incredible view of the lush Eden below. Corpse, Jim Taylor, Senior Security Personnel, Kane, SEC, Personal Data Tag 29207, Security Level 2. 
Charles Young, Security Personnel, Kane, SC, Kane Sec, Personal Data Tag 27793, Security Level 1. Slow spinning fan, slow, fast spinning fan. This fan's constant spin sends a heady blend of botanical scents through the room. Okay. Oxygen, oxygen. Uh, it's just overgrown seedlings. These young plants are massively overgrown, overflowing their growth chambers in a desperate attempt to reach the continuously burning hydroponic lights. Corpse, Chris Rogers, Helmsman, Groom Lake, Calm, Personal Data Tag 28351, Security Level 1. Oh, here we go. Insect Swarm. The insects swarm in great clusters, their bodies luminous like fireflies. Okay, well, um, let's get out of here. So we need to get through that room. In order to get through that room, let's go here and get some milk. Right? We don't need to get close to... Shh. Uh, queen chamber. Activate the pump. Hmm. It said that it was docile during milking, right? And then grew much more. See, the happy face makes me think that it's like, that's safe time. To the extent that we need to interact with it. <laughs> like, I feel like if we came up to it now, we'd basically die. Right? Because it's just nothing else. But once in a while, it'll get milked. And then it's like, it releases that, those, that cloud of whatever, and then you get the happy face right there. Alright, but... Go here, we got the milk. Let's go to the milk. Because it can't be that easy, right? There's never, it's never a point A to point B here. Let's get this, let's get that. I'm really worried about the crack, but I don't mean... Fine. Okay. We can turn on the vaporizer. Vaporizer chamber compromised. Chamber is not airtight. Okay. Okay. What can we do? Can we... Plug it with a with a plaque. No, that won't work. Thank you. Okay, so go back here. The only other room, right? The only other thing that we can interact with is the queen. But and here's a thought: What if we get more milk? Remember, uh, uh, Akiza said. Yeah, get on this. Get on the system. Akiza said that the milk, or the jelly, or whatever you want to call it, has binding properties which make it like a good adhesive. More. Give me more milk. Thank you. Okay. Good. Pick up the milk. Go back. What if we can... What if we try and... use it as a binding agent between the glass and... the plaque? I don't think this will fit. I don't need you make it fit, man. I don't think that'll work. Ugh. Right on the gun. These don't go well together. You put me behind, John. You put me behind. Can we put this on the desk so we can work with it? These don't go well together. Nope, never mind. Okay. Fine. There's no way to avoid it. Let's interact with the queen. <laughs> There's nothing else left. Come on. We're gonna wait until Smiley Face shows up, and then we're gonna run up and see what happens. Hopefully it's a free pass. Any second now. Any second now. There we go. Uh, John? What are you doing? Back off, John. What did you just pick up? Queen pincer. Okay. Can we... Hold on. Here's... The other thing they were saying was that it was something with the resin, right? Can we... No, that wouldn't work. Can we... We use anything to chip it off. There we go. Pierced Amber. The sap wells up as you pierce the amber deposits and it slowly spreads across the floor like honey. It's pungent and sweet. Nice. Okay, can we put some stuff on the plaque? It's just crazy. God. Although... Yeah, although... Hmm. Maybe? No. God, John, I'm not crazy. I know what hmm. I'm doing. Right. 
Or are you just gonna pick it up? John. Right? Right. Metal plaque with sap. No. Okay, fine. Just with just with sap. Fine, because this because the tree already has milk in it, so we don't need the milk. Or we don't need the milk right now. Uh let's put this here. Come on. The folks are waiting, John, that's all I'm saying. Alright, here we go. Crack glass, this vaporizer has been repaired. Good. Let's activate it now. Excellent. What did I just pick up? Vaporized Queen Pheromone. Nice. Uh, I don't know what that does. I thought it would be dispersing it, but I guess not. Guess not. Okay. Well, that's fine. We made some serious progress. Next time, let's just go here so we're... So that we're nice and ready here for the next episode. The next episode, we'll try and find a way through this swarm, because we need to go here, I think. Through the pods. I'm assuming that's what these mean. That's what they mean whenever they said pods. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll go from there. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that uh, I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. Uh, if you have thoughts on what's going on, if you have uh, ideas on what I overlooked, or maybe something I could be doing differently or better, by all means, leave a comment. Everything's welcome, and in any case, I'll see you all next time. Better,